All right, in this video, we're going to try to prove that a certain group, well, is a group. Uh, in fact, we want to prove it's an abelian group, which adds an extra axiom to what we need to check, namely commutativity. So in this case, the set we're looking at is a set of two by two matrices that are of the form AB, negative BA, where the top two numbers are not both zero. One of them could be zero, but not both of them. And uh, we want to show that under the usual matrix multiplication, we actually get a group. The first thing we have to check, of course, is that this really forms a binary operation. That is, if I multiply two matrices of this form together, I get another matrix of that form. This isn't actually as easy as it sounds. Let's, let's give a look at why. So let me take two matrices of that form. Okay, I have AB, negative BA, where not both of these are zero. Uh, and I'm going to multiply it by a matrix of the form CD and then negative DC. Okay, so if I multiply these, let's see, I get AC minus BD. I get AD plus BC. And then on the bottom, let's see, uh, negative BC and a negative AD. Okay, so I can write that as negative AD plus BC. Good, that's the negative of the D component. And let's see, the last one I get negative BD plus AC, or I could write that as just AC minus BD. Cool. Why is that good? Well, I have the top two components, and on the bottom, let's see, that's the negative of the second component on the top, and this is the first component on the bottom. So it's of the right shape, but is it really in G? Remember, G not only requires you to be of this type, but it also requires that the top two numbers are not both zero, which means we need to check that AC minus, BC, minus BD is not zero, and or that AD plus BC is not zero. Okay, so what if they both were zero? What would it look like? Well, we'd have AC minus BD being zero, or if you like, AC equals BD. If AD plus BC equaled zero, then that would tell you that AD equaled negative BC. Okay, well now we seem to be stuck. We don't really see a contradiction coming out of here. Why couldn't they all be zero? Uh, so let's take a little uh, look here. Um, if it was the case that uh, this was true, uh, and say B was not zero, So if B is not equal to zero, then, well, let me play a trick. Let me multiply the second equation by C. So if I multiply by C, I get that A times C times D, and of course I can rearrange these in any order I like, they're just real numbers, would equal negative B times C squared. And the reason I write it this way is because I know what AC is. By assumption, AC is B times D. So I could write AC as B times D times another D, which would give me B times D squared. And that would equal negative B times C squared. All right, B is not equal to zero, so I can divide by it. So D squared is equal to negative C squared. Okay, but c squared and d squared, those are both positive numbers. And one positive number is equal to the negative of another positive number. Nope, that's not going to happen. The only way this could possibly happen is if these were actually zero. All right? So that would mean that c and d were both zero, and that's a contradiction. Right? And we could play a very similar game to uh, get that if a was not equal to zero, and we know one of a or b is not zero, but if a is not equal to zero, again, we could get a similar contradiction. Okay? All right, so with a little bit of work, we can show we really do have a binary operation on g. What about associativity? Well, here again, we're not going to prove anything because we know matrix multiplication is associative. Okay, next we need the identity element. Well, we know what the identity element under matrix multiplication should be. It should be 1, 0, 0, 1. Is that of the right type? Well, let's see. We have 1, 0 on the top. 
If you negate the zero, it's still zero. Good. And you move the uh, one to the bottom corner. No, oh, it's still one. It's it's good. All right. Uh, are the top components both not zero? Or rather, are they both? Yeah, not one of them not zero. Sure, we have a one. All right. So we have an identity element. Okay. What about inverses? Ah. Now with inverses, well, we need to know what the inverse of a two by two matrix is. So. This is a well-known formula. The inverse of a arbitrary 2 by 2 matrix, A, B, C, D, is going to be 1 over A, D minus B, C, that's the determinant of the matrix, times, and what you do is you swap the diagonal entries, D, A, and you negate the off-diagonal entries minus B, minus C. Okay, so that's the, the general one. In our case, if we have A, B, minus B, A, and we want the inverse, then this would be 1 over A squared minus, minus B squared. So 1 over A squared plus B squared. And what's important to know here is that because one of these two numbers, A or B, is not 0, a squared or B squared, one of those two numbers, is going to be not zero. All right? In fact, it'll be a positive number. And so when you add them together, this number is definitely going to be a positive number, right? not zero. Okay, then we have to swap the diagonals. Well, nothing changes. And I have to negate these elements. So I get negative B and I get B here. Okay. And so this really makes sense, right? It's not zero. I'm not dividing by zero here. And so if I multiply this through, I get a over a squared plus b squared. I get negative b over a squared plus b squared, positive b over a squared plus b squared, and a over a squared plus b squared. Now I want to make sure that this is really an element of g. Well, let's see. This element is the same as the one on the other diagonal component. And if I negate this, I get this bottom left-hand corner. And why is it that one, at least one of these is non-zero? Well, I know that at least one of A or B is non-zero. If A is the one that's non-zero, well, then this is definitely non-zero. If B is the one that's non-zero, then this is the one that's non-zero. And so this is actually still an element of the group. And so the inverse of, our, of any of our elements in G is again an element in G. And so G is actually a group. Okay, what's left? Well, we wanted to show this was actually an abelian group. So we have to show commutativity. That is, if I multiply two matrices in G, it doesn't matter what order I multiply them in. So let's take two arbitrary matrices in G, multiply them together, and show that we actually get the same thing if we do it the other way. So I'll start with AB minus BA times CD minus DC. And this gives me a C uh, minus BD and a D plus BC. And we already checked before that uh, this is going to give me an element in G. So I know this will be negative AD plus BC and AC minus BD. Now let me check it in the other direction. CD minus DC times AB minus BA. So let's see, I get AC minus BD. Excellent, it matches in the first slot. Okay, and then I get uh, CB and AD. So I can write that as AD plus BC. Again, it matches. Now, I could verify the last two, or I could make the following observation. These are two elements in G. I know that their product is going to be an element in G, which means I know I can just simply take these two components, drive this one into the bottom right, AC minus BD, negate this and put it in the bottom left, negative AD plus BC. And of course it's going to match. Right? So in fact, if you want to know whether any two matrices in G are going to be the same, all you really have to do is check the top two components. Okay. So since it doesn't matter which order I multiply them in, this implies G is an abelian group. 
with the usual matrix multiplication.